guys, Chris. This is Craig and Moore, Distillers Edition, and this is video number seven for the Green Malt, or at least whiskey video number seven. Um, I did Ben Romick and Blair Athol in the last two videos, and I wanted to get back to something a little bit easier. Uh, in the early attempts at video making, first few, for those of you that can sit through the clicking of the camera autofocus, uh, I did mention that I, one of the things I wanted to do was talk about some whiskeys that would be interesting to try if you were enthusiastic about whiskey but just getting into it. And uh, I think Craig and Moore is so far in the wheelhouse of that that you, you can't do any better. Um, and uh, so Craig and Moore as a distillery is one of the six classic malts of Scotland as, as uh, branded by Diageo, its parent company. Um, it's supposed to be representative of the Speyside region, and as a distillery, it describes itself as being more complex than uh, your typical Speyside single malts, which I can't speak to historically, but currently I think I question that statement. I think uh, there's a lot of positive characteristics of Craig and Moore, both as a beverage and as a distillery, but I don't know if complexity is one of them. Uh, probably quite the opposite, in fact. It's uh, it's one of the few distilleries that I had a chance to visit while I was in Scotland. Well, few. I think I, I think there was 11 of them. I think that's a few. Uh, and it was probably my favorite of the bunch. Not necessarily the most picturesque, but, I mean, it was pretty. No question about it. It's some really nice old outbuildings that were kind of cool to check out a little bit, but the, the staff were awesome, the, the tour was excellent, and thank you to the staff there. Uh, and the uh, the whole experience was just great. It was capped off by a, a really excellent tasting as well, and a converted office space that they made into a pretty luxurious looking tasting room for tours. Uh, the highlight of which was a single barrel cask strength sampling that they drew earlier that day, and I uh, wish I could have bought a bottle of that because it was outstanding. But uh, it was not to be, so instead I came home with this. And it's seen better days. It traveled a long way to get home, so it's a little bit battered, but here it is. The Distiller's Edition. The only difference between this and the standard Craig and Moore 12 year old is that they double mature this, so they finish it for say 12, roughly 12 months in uh, port, Portwood. Um, so you would expect it to get a little bit more sweetness from the port wood, maybe some uh, red fruit or chocolate notes. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit in the taste, but that's what I would expect from a port finish whiskey. Um, now, as I said, Craig and Moore describes itself as a complex whiskey. I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. They talk about flat top stills as adding complexity. They also have worm tube cooling on their, on their stills like I talked about with my helpful hand gestures in the open video, um, all of which is supposed to help in that respect, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this is bottled at 40%, which I think is a big uh, detriment to the whiskey. I think it's often a detriment to any whiskey, but in this one in particular, I think it robs it of some potential character. I'd love to try it at 46 or higher, but I can't have it all. I don't doubt, I mean, it's certainly filtered. They wouldn't bottle it at 40% if it wasn't filtered, and it's probably got a little bit of color as well, though I'm not 100% sure on that. It's a little bit golden, but you would expect some deeper red tone to come out of a port wood finish. This one's kind of like a rose honey, not quite russet, but yeah, deep honey color. But as I've said in the last video, I don't know how much I care right now about coloring or filtration of whiskey. The more I learn about it, the, the more I think it doesn't necessarily have a substantive impact on the final product, always anyway. But let's see what the whiskey's all about. Yeah, very sweet nose, right? And Craig and Moore, as I talked about in uh, the Johnny Walker Green episode a little bit, uh, is a sweet 
very barley heavy uh, cereal forward kind of whiskey to begin with and then you add in the port finishing to it you would expect a little bit more sweetness to it and it comes through on the nose no question about it like heavy barley cereal notes on the nose and sugary not honey but like sugar just like straight up sugar on the nose vanilla uh, citrus orange peel Maybe a little toffee, sure, why not? Not none of the chocolate uh, red fruit notes that I would associate with port finishes uh, in my limited experience and would expect on the nose, none of that. Very simple nose, it's approachable, it's pleasant. I'm starting to think I say pleasant too much, but uh, let's get a t-shirt, pleasant. Mm. I should say, I mean, I poured this before I started recording. It's been sitting in the glass for about 10 minutes. I added just a few drops of water, and I mean like literal drops, uh, only because it is 40%. It's a really easy whiskey to begin with. I didn't want to water it down. And that's exactly what it comes across on, as, as on the on the palate is super easy drinking. Everything you would expect from the nose comes through immediately on the palate, right? Heavy cereal notes again. Super sweet, not cloyingly sweet though. There's no question that, uh, uh, from my recollection of the Craig and Moore 12, there is a little bit of added sweetness from the Portwood. Um, certainly approaching, if not at dessert malt level. I tend to like sweeter whiskeys myself, so it doesn't bother me. It could bother some people if you're not into that. Or if not bother, then really limit how much of this you'd want to drink in a in a sitting. Definitely get the port influence on the palate, at least a little bit. Not heavy at all. A little bit of cherry. A little bit of like uh, ribena. Uh, that black currant, I think, flavoring. Chocolate, the chocolate is there now. Vanilla's gone. So what did I say? Cereal notes, sweet, sugary approach. Little bit of red fruit, little bit of currant, little bit of chocolate. And the finish is um, finish is a little different. The finish is more of a dry, like sour, citrus, orange peel, lemon rind kind of finish. And I have to say that's probably the biggest disappointment of this whiskey for me is is that aspect of it. And one thing I haven't talked about with this, and I don't generally talk about with a lot of whiskeys, and maybe I should, is uh, just like the the sensation of drinking this whiskey and uh i really hate saying it but uh let's do it the mouthfeel uh it's nice it's got enough oily viscosity to it it's got enough weight to it that it's, it's a surprisingly enjoyable experience just from the mouth feel aspect of it that uh, it adds, it does, it, it, honestly, it adds to the experience. All right, yeah, so let's break it down. The nose is simple, approachable, pleasant, and I think that is a perfect description for your initial experience when you sip it as well. All of the flavor notes from the nose are there on the palate. Except for maybe the vanilla. I don't taste the vanilla that I smell and I don't taste the quite the level of citrus until the finish that I smell. And that you get a few added notes on the palate. But the finish is where it kind of lacks to me. I wish there was a little bit more to it. It's something that lingered a little bit longer aside from the sour citrus. And that's why Johnny Walker Green 
as I talked about in episode number one, is such a great blend for me because I enjoy the early approach and development of the Craig and more so much, uh, at least when I want something easy drinking and just enjoyable, that it's, it's so, so great to incorporate that and then build in the Talisker or the Kalila, that, that sort of oomph on the end that really gives it an extra, an extra layer that is probably, frankly, lacking in this bottle. So I enjoy this. I really do. It's just, uh, you know, one small step away from being something that I really enjoy and that I would really want to have on hand all the time. And maybe if it was available at a higher alcohol percentage, it would be different. Um, I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to taste it. But to get back to what I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to do something that was approachable, that was easy drinking, that I think a wide variety of whiskey enthusiasts or newcomers could enjoy. And this distillery is the perfect one uh, if you're new to whiskey. You might not be able to find the distiller's edition everywhere. I don't know how widely they distribute this, if at all, beyond the distillery itself. But it's very similar to the 12-year-old like a few small tasting notes in this that I don't remember tasting in the Craig and More 12, but there's so little difference that it's not worth worrying about. A 12 year old is reasonably priced. It's pretty widely available. And if you're looking for something that, that is approachable, it's right up there. So uh, without grading the 12, but to grade the distillers edition, if I had to give it a mark, I'd give it an 80. Uh, it's just, it's good. It's not necessarily remarkably good. It's not necessarily something that I would rush out and replace when I, when I finally get through this. But uh, I'm happy to have had it. I'm happy to have tried it. I'm very happy to have visited the distillery. It's one of those I'd love to go back to. And uh, I dearly hope that they continue to put out Johnny Walker Green Label because I feel like I get everything I enjoy out of the Crag and more uh, with a little extra added on. So Diageo, please keep making Johnny Walker green. Anyway, that being said, uh, see you all in the next video and thank you. Cheers. Yeah.